Hey, what's happening guys? Happy Monday the 9th. That's what it is right now. It's September 9th and I've got some things I need to get done uh, to the razor. Got some things that it's been on a list of things to do and I just haven't done it because we've been so busy with other things. What are we? Six weeks maybe from Camp Razor. How many of you guys have had a uh, brake pressure switch on the back side of the master cylinder, the brake pressure switch, uh, go out on you? The razor was starting to get really, really hard to start. Um, you had to mash the brake pedal to the floor. It felt like you were going to snap it off to get the thing to crank over. And sometimes it just wouldn't start. It just didn't want to start key on, key off, and have to keep messing with it. And I thought we were going to be stuck. And, and what's interesting, this is an OEM part, which uh, when I get the other one out, I'll show you. I think it looks different because it doesn't have a little pigtail on it like this. Um, so maybe, uh, but this is an OEM, it says part for it. So maybe this new design somehow corrected it. Maybe they knew they had an issue with it. I've got bad camber going on here. Too much, I think, positive camber. So the top of the tires kind of angled out. Um, that's because I adjusted the springs up because of the additional weight since I bought it. And so um, I've been putting that off because as soon as I adjust the camber, I have to do the alignment and I hate doing the alignment. Grease wheel bearings a couple of times now, so I'll show you what I do to grease wheel bearings. I have new axles showing up today for the front. Super ATV Rhino 2.0 axles on the back, um, and I've liked them a lot. And the front axles, there's not really anything wrong with it. I think I've got some grease leaking from the passenger side CV boot. I wanted them to, to match color-wise, so I like the gray. So we're just going to make those spares. Not Never never bad idea to have spare axles uh, on the motorhome. So axles camber adjustment, alignment, wheel bearings, pressure switch, other plug-in part for it. Okay, decided to actually start on the back. Uh, UPS isn't going to be getting here till like 1 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon with the maxles. So I don't want to take the front all apart and then be just sitting here till 2 and not be able to work on the back since I don't have multiple jacks and I can't get the whole car up off the ground. A couple of things I forgot uh, that I'm going to do, I'm going to be doing this, uh, so the, you know everybody knows outer wears, the covers for your air intake uh, filters. Um, they sell just random sheets in different sizes of this stuff. Um, I decided I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut uh, some of this and I'm going to wrap the blow off valve with it. So I've seen some pre-filters for blow off valves, I have not found one for the agency power one that I'm using. Haven't had any issues not having something over it, but I just thought, you know what, while I'm at, at it doing other things, I like the idea of doing this. I run an outerwear on the filter, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut a piece of this, wrap the blow-off valve, and zip tie it. So just peace of mind really just makes me feel better. I've been running Agency Power's uh, just oversized air filter on this without the air box cover. So. Their air, air filter is uh, is gigantic, and it does not fit the, the, the box cover back over it. And in my opinion, I'm not personally worried about it. I know somebody's going to say you should never probably run the box open like this. But uh, I've had buggies and stuff in the past where I had a buggy and uh, a lot of friends with sand rails and stuff like that. And guys, you know what? All those big $50,000 uh, motors and LSs and all that stuff, they're just running a cane with an outerwear on it. And it's exposed and they're not blowing motors left and right. So I'm not doing any mud bogging or water crossing or anything like that with this on there. But, you know, as long as you're making a good seal at this point and no uh, dust is getting in through, you know, just a improperly installed air filter, um, technically this is the same as anybody else's vehicle out there. So... Um, been running it this way since uh, last year and, and like it. You obviously get a lot more uh, turbo noise and spool up and stuff like that, but um, just overall, I've, I've enjoyed it. Feels like maybe it gave a little power bump. I don't know, maybe not. But I'm going to blow this area out with some uh, compressed air and then uh, get that blow off valve wrapped and adjust the back camber and get that squared away. Got to take it off the jacks. I didn't take the wheel off. I went ahead and uh, loosened up this nut um, before I jacked the car up because it's a little bit more accessible and uh, just jacked everything up and then popped this bottom bolt out and just as a starting point of reference I went ahead and bottomed that heim joint completely out which was a huge adjustment it, it moved in a good probably five eighths of an inch. I'm gonna go ahead and just drop it on these jacks because it does help spread it out when I drop it down so you can see it's tucked in a little bit and see, I feel like that's going to be too much, but I wanted to see what would happen. So let's, let's drop it and see what happens. Freaking perfect. 
I'm not gonna mess with that anymore. I mean, I just bottomed out that bottom one completely and uh, I really like where it's sitting now. Um, I have no interest in squeezing an extra hour, two hours, potentially three or four hours out of the belt just to blow it out in the dunes and have to deal with it, especially at some kind of inopportune time, climbing a hill, sideways in a giant bowl with passengers in the car. So this belt's made it through the last uh, two Glamis trips and our vacation. I'm just going to go ahead and take it out and throw it in the trash. I usually carry at least two belts and uh, two new belts, and I also have a couple of the old belts in the motorhome, so I've got plenty in case something happens. But I'm going to put a new belt on it, I'm going to blow the clutches out, and uh, I consider that just a small price to pay before season starts to know that we can go out there and hammer on it, and I don't got to worry about blowing a belt. So um, I'm going to get that done real quick. pretty significant amount of wear on it so um, again not a bad thing I probably would have got another few hours off this but uh, just not worth it not that important to me Now that the back's all wrapped up, I'm going to go ahead and jack the front up, pull the face off, the bumper, get all that uh, out of the way to make it a little bit easier. And there's some weird clicking going on in the back. I almost felt like I had a broken front axle. When I was backing it up, like fully turned, it was clicking like a broken axle on the passenger side. So it's kind of weird. Um, but we're going to go ahead and pull it all apart, see what we got. All right, so I got the front fascia and everything peeled off. Um, just to make it a little bit easier to access some of the stuff in here, but uh, basically to, uh, to do the front camber, uh, these Super ATV arms have adjustable lower uh, joints here to, uh, to bring that out and adjust that back and forth. So we're going to go ahead and loosen these uh, little lock nuts up and uh, end up taking these out, taking the wheels off and all that good stuff and then adjusting it out. <laughs> UPS just showed up. They knew I was working on the front end. Timed it perfectly. Got the bottom uh, A-arm out, and uh, I just need to disconnect the tie rod here, tie rod end, and um, I'll be able to swing this out and pop this axle out. See what's up with it. Um, let me show you the bearing greaser that I use. I bought this from uh, TGH, oh man, I can't remember the name. There's like a full name for the company, but only stamped on this. I've had it a few years. TGH, the bearing greaser. So I'm just going to go ahead and 
Take this side with the grease nipple to the outside. Slide it in there. The back plate is optional. You don't have to use it, but it does hold it in place. I'm just going to go ahead and grease it up. You just start to see the grease. I was trying not to squeeze it out of the back side, but it came out a little bit. Just started to come out around the uh, back plate here. And there you go. All greased up and good to go. Gonna get this uh, axle popped in this side and cleaned up a little bit and then move on to the second side. So, turns out, axle's not gray. The shit. Super ATV. Damn it. Didn't read the fine print, I guess. Only the back axles are gray. Front axles are black. Not that big of a deal. Because at the end of the day, the OEM CV, sorry, axle, uh, has a bad CV. So it feels like it's got a bag of marbles in there instead. Um, which is what the clicking was and the crap that I was feeling when I was backing into the garage. So. Originally bought these for gray axles to match the back. Pretty stupid. Feeling pretty dumb about that. Turns out I had a bad axle anyways. Greased the wheel bearing, adjusted the bottom out one full turn. So once over, once over, one full turn, revolution there, whatever you want to call it. Hoping that's going to be good for the camber adjustment on the front. Um, and this side's pretty much done. So going to get it buttoned up, put the wheel back on it and move on to the other side all while remembering the goal today was to replace the pressure switch and that's going to be that's going to be a pain in the butt that is going to be fun pretty sure i'm gonna have to bleed the brakes after that so i'm gonna go ahead and get this other side done and then we're going to move on to that damn pressure switch see what happens so it turns out with uh, everything off this front driver's side the switch, that pressure switch, became super accessible. And that is it right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that swapped out now um, because it is uh, a bear to get to otherwise. So that's the culprit. That guy's gotta get replaced. This is the stock one. Let's see if we can focus on that. This is the, sorry, I'm shaking. This is the replacement. So it's got this pigtail on it, which is interesting, a big, in this big uh, space here of rubber and insulator and wire and they must have figured something out but I'm gonna go ahead and get this put all back together here so basically I'm gonna get these uh, this new switch connected I clipped the old one off and replaced that as well so I've got the uh, ends ready to go on this side I've just got a wire tucked up in here that I can't really record it's, it's, it's right here though and I'm gonna get the ends of that prepped and get this guy connected. Don't have a torch, so I'm just using a lighter. All right, there you have it. New connection, new pressure switch.
Man, recap on the day. So we did rear camber adjustment. We blew the clutches out, changed to a new belt. On the front, we did new axles, camber adjustment, greased the wheel bearings, replaced the brake pressure switch sensor. So when you pe press the brake pedal, it'll allow you to crank the motor. I think that's it. Everything turned out great. Super, super excited about it. Still got a little bit of an alignment to do up front, probably in the days leading up to the to the Camp Razor trip. A couple other small things, but that was the brunt of it. That was everything I really been putting off to get done. Car looks great. Freaking can't wait to get there. Nothing like that first day pulling into Glamis. I can see it. Freaking so excited. <laughs> but uh, that's it for today. I'm gonna go ahead and close up shop here for the night and um, still editing a video from last weekend from our moto camping trip but uh, guys can't wait to see you all out there I think it's gonna be a great weekend I've never attended Camp Razor so uh, pretty excited to see the, the crowds and uh, the craziness I know everybody's gonna be there so we're looking forward to cruising through and saying hi to everybody it's gonna be a great freaking time it's only a month away so Thank you for watching, liking, subscribing to all the videos. I appreciate you guys. And uh, keep an eye out. We're going to have, obviously, a lot of great videos this season from Glamis and other things. Appreciate you. All right, see you on the next one.